Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they had to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. I'm really glad that you could join me today. And if you're listening to this show on uh, Podomatic, you can also come to iTunes and you can subscribe there uh, to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. And um, you can also come to the blog Women Entrepreneurs Secrets and check uh, under the podcast uh, link in the menu. And there you will see a list of different platforms the show is on. Some of the older shows are being moved to live since, so they're being moved a little at a time. So you can catch um, interviews with other entrepreneurs who've been on the show over the years, and I hope that you will do that. And also, if you've enjoyed um, what you hear, uh, please uh, consider leaving a review if you're on iTunes. That would be great. It helps the show to be found by more people. Or also you can leave feedback on the blog, womenentrepreneursecrets.com. And also if you're interested in being a guest, you can go there as well and get information about that. And I hope that you'll visit my uh, website, dbaileycoach.com, and check out uh, my coaching for entrepreneurs who want to write books. And also I have some uh, life and business transition coaching there as well. So you can get all that information and um, check it out. Leave me questions and I look forward to hearing from you. So we're going to get started with actually a returning guest. And Andrea Waltz is the co-author of Go For No. Yes is the destination. No is how you get there. Along with her husband and business partner, Richard Fenton, she has made it her mission to liberate people from fears of failure and rejection, sharing an entirely new mindset about hearing the word no. They have spoken all over the U.S. and the U.K., teaching the go-for-no strategies, having been embraced by people in a wide variety of industries and businesses to rave reviews and amazing results. Andrea's book hit number one on Amazon's selling list and has remained in the top 20 of sales books for over the past eight years. So welcome back to the show, Andrea. Hey, Deb. It is great to be back with you. <laughs> yes, this is wonderful. I, I was really excited, um, you know, when I, I heard uh, that you uh, were interested in being back on the show. And, and I remember uh, talking about your book back then because it really made such an impression on me as far as going for no. I was like... <laughs> Right. I really couldn't couldn't quite understand that at first, and then I realized, okay, that made perfect sense. And uh, listeners, we're going to be getting more into that topic, which I'm sure that you will learn a lot about. But first, Andrea, if you could just share a little bit about your journey, you know, what brought you to um, your business and writing that book, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, well, I've been on the entrepreneurial journey now for about 20 years. And before that, uh, my husband and business partner and I met um, at work at our corporate jobs. And we were both in the training department. Um, he was one of our uh, fantastic trainers. And we talked a lot about customer service and sales and management and all of our philosophies and strategies of, of, of how to um, really kind of achieve goals and um, help other people achieve their goals. And after talking, um, 
to him and he actually shared the go for no philosophy with me as well, which was life changing, even at my corporate job. Um, we decided to launch our own business and I did the marketing and he did the speaking. And eventually, um, over the years, we've transitioned to where we do it together. Um, now we speak together and have for the last several years. Uh, but it all started with a crazy just idea and plan to leave our jobs. I don't recommend doing that without a safety net. Um, but so many people are doing things on the side and entrepreneurial things. And uh, we had no idea what we were doing. And that naivete was helpful. I think <laughs> I'm glad I didn't know what I know now because I was probably have talked myself out of it. <laughs> well, that's a good point. I think a lot of people leap into it or perhaps they've had some kind of a job loss or something. And then it's like, well, let me just do this. And um, you, you don't always know where you're going to land in the beginning of it. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, so it, it takes a while to really get the hang of it and get the feel of, of what you're doing once you're outside of all those structures. But, you know, today we're going to talk about the overcoming fear of failure, rejection, and hearing no. And um, that's a tough one. You know, what What are your thoughts about this? It is tough. And I think that when a lot of people hear the words go for no, they think, well, why would I want to go for no? That is like the exact opposite mm-hmm. of what I want. I want yeses in my business. Mm-hmm. And um, really, it's a, it's a counterintuitive strategy um, of intentionally increasing the number of times you hear no, intentionally increasing and being willing to fail. That's kind of a, a part of it. And, um, and I don't mean fail just to fail and to, uh, to not um, make sure that you are learning and growing. I mean, being willing to hear no, right. Being mm-hmm. willing to, to fail because when you do increase the number of no's you hear, uh, usually that increases the number of yeses that you're going to get. And it really comes from a place down of kind of just uh, understanding that the avoidance of no and the, a lot of the things that we do to kind of protect ourselves from those no's or that rejection sabotages us, sabotages our opportunities, and really starts limiting us because mm-hmm. we're just not willing to hear it. So if you can learn to open yourself up and say, Hey, I know that I could fail. I know this person could reject me. They could say no, but it's worth it because the yeses are out there. The more you do that, the more success you will have. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when you put this into a book, were you a little hesitant? Because it still seems to me like a radical uh, way to put this. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> the title was probably the thing we were most concerned about, but Go For No is a fable. And so, um, and it's very short. I mean, it is literally 80 pages. It's a short business fable. And so the concepts at least are being taught in a way that's fun and different and industri- interesting and people tend to remember them. Uh, the title was the thing, you know, putting, putting Go For No where I thought, well, are people going to get that? It does sound negative. And, and so we have had over the years marketing challenges. I will mm-hmm. call them marketing challenges where people say, you know, oh, it sounds negative. Or maybe a lot of times people think that we're teaching how to say no, which is mm-hmm. such a, right? Such a huge strategy in and of itself, especially for entrepreneurs is, mm-hmm. um, how do you say no to things so that you can focus on what's really important to you? And, and yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of interesting because if you are bad with saying no, then go for no can also be a challenge. It's just that the whole relationship you have with the word, um, and often that comes from just a wanting to please others. And, um, so you, you say yes to everything. Mm-hmm. You can't say no. And therefore it's hard for you to also hear no. Hmm. That's a very good point. Uh, you hadn't, you hadn't really thought of because a lot of times if you're trying to please everyone, um, how can you really please everyone? <laughs> you're just not going to get that done. Right. You know, and I think that a lot of, uh, business owners also sometimes want to try to appeal to everyone. Do you think that's part of the problem too? They're trying to serve every customer and, and just trying to be, 
um, I don't know if it's likable, but um, just have a, an appeal to everyone. And, and I don't really think that's a good idea. Oh, I totally agree with you. And that is a whole part of, you know, a whole important conversation is just being willing to niche down and be willing to, um, sometimes there's a fear, I think, of, of not being everything to everyone and, mm. and thinking that, well, how many people am I going to lose? The irony, though, mm-hmm. is the more clarity that you bring to what you do. I mean, I, you know, as a speaker, Richard and I sell our our speech and we are very clear. This topic is about helping people overcome fear of the word no and mm-hmm. overcome failure and rejection. And so, I mean, it is a specialized topic and we mm-hmm. can go out and say, well, we talk on success and we talk on this and we talk on that. And while all of those are points are true and you can make the case that we do touch on all of these things. If we did that, it would just start to limit us, right? We would just mm-hmm. start to, it, you know, become a jack of all trades and a master of none. And so mm-hmm. it is better off. I think that you've hit on something that is really important. Mm. And why do you think that um, there is such a fear of uh hearing no or or is it more just the fear of failing and not measuring up i mean i know there's a lot of levels to this <laughs> you're so right well it's interesting we say we we actually came up with the five failure levels um mm. and we we talk about that in the book but uh there are a lot of levels and i think it starts off with the fact that as kids we were super tenacious we had no fear of looking stupid we were like hey i'm going to learn how to ride a bike i'm going to fall off i'm going to um, everyone's going to look like an idiot, right? Mm-hmm. And no, we don't care. We just like go through all of these failures as kids learning how to do all these things. We ask our parents for stuff all the time, learning how to be persistent to get what we want. And uh, we have no fear or hesitation of, for any of that. But it does tend to get drummed out of us as we grow up and we become aware. And now as adults, here we are and we think, well, I don't, I don't want, what what will everyone think if I start this new business and it doesn't go? I don't want to fail. I don't want to be rejected. And um, I don't want to look bad. And so we have all of this pressure to be perfect. So one of the things that we always say is you've got to give yourself permission to fail. And I know that no one wants to fail. They don't want to suffer the financial consequences or hardship or take a step back. But in order to try something and test and see how it goes, uh, some of those things are a reality and they could happen. But you mm-hmm. don't, you, you can't protect yourself forever, right? You just um, sometimes there's no amount of safety that can that you can ensure, and you just have to try it. And so it's giving yourself permission to fail um, and kind of tapping into that tenacity that we had as kids. Because we we do you're, we've we've lost it and that's a part of it. Hmm. And I think that's that's such a great point because as as kids you're trial trial and error kind of thing. Especially you know kids are maybe getting up and learning to walk or or talk or do different things and and there's a sense that they get back up again. If they fall. Yeah. <laughs> if they fall down, but somehow in there you're right. We we begin to be really afraid. Of, of making the wrong step. Absolutely. Um, yeah. 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 It's funny you'd say that too, because we, we actually created this cute um, graphic meme that is a picture of a little baby's um, legs. And it says, <laughs> uh, it says, I've hit my head on the coffee table for the ninth time. That's it. I'm done. They can just take care of me forever. <laughs> It's true. I mean, you, we, we kept going somehow. Um, something instinctive or whatever was pushing you as a child to just keep going. So it seems like how in the world does that get lost once you get to a certain point in your life? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And we, we just have to continue to fight that really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think that's something that is, well, I guess that that is something that's kind of conditioned or taught, uh, to us? Well, yeah, and you know, there's a, there's a book by a lady named Carol Dweck, and it's called Mindset. And it's mm-hmm. really fascinating. She talks about the two kinds of mindsets that people are kind of, uh, that are 
developed. And really, she's done a lot of research um, on children and in schools. And one of the mindsets is called a growth mindset. And the other is called a fixed mindset. Mm-hmm. And without going deep into it, and I know she, in her book, she does such a much better job than I will do here, but kind of the essence of it is the growth mindset is somebody who um isn't just trying to, and this is from like a student's perspective, just prove themselves. Like if you, if you, it, it's somebody who believes that they can get better through trial and error, that um, they can improve. Mm-hmm. A fixed mindset is kind of a, no, I'm, I'm bad at this particular skill and I'm never going to get any better. And what happens is with, with the fixed mindset, it's kind of just becomes almost like a, a way to kind of prove yourself and it's it's failure is not um acceptable and it's it's not a it's not about learning it's just about taking the test and trying to get an a Mm -hmm. whereas growth mindset is okay let's try to improve and let's try to learn and grow through this and Mm -hmm. it's easy to get in that fixed mindset where it just becomes all about proving ourselves and not about what are the lessons here um what did I, you know, what did I do to grow, uh, today? And one of my, one of my favorite quotes she says from the book is, what did you learn today? What mistake did you make that taught you something? What did you try hard at today? And those, that's part of that growth mindset is just being able to answer those questions without feeling like it was just about what proving yourself, getting mm-hmm. that A. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's a great point. Because I think a lot of times that is what um, students are conditioned uh, to think that we'll get, get the A and, and anything else just isn't good enough. And then, of course, that opens the door for other things <laughs> down the road. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I think that's how, you know, I think a lot of people, if they, if they really analyze it, they, look and they say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist, right? I'm mm-hmm. a perfectionist. And so what happens is it's kind of like, I, I'm not going to try anything or do anything unless I know it will succeed yes. or, and, and that I know that it's going to be perfect. Like it's mm-hmm. going to be, I don't want to write the book cause it's not going to be, I don't have the money to get the best cover in the world mm-hmm. or I, I, you know, it's not this or it's not that. And so they don't do it. And yet it would be in the doing it that so many lessons would be learned and growth would happen. And yeah, maybe the first book isn't successful. Maybe it's the third book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's an excellent point, actually. And do you, do you feel that, I mean, in terms of a lot, we were talking about people going into entrepreneurship and I think, I think, I would say for the most part, people aren't really maybe prepared for selling or trained for selling. For selling. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? So what, what do you say to them? The, the small business owner who's like, Oh my goodness, I didn't know I'd have to do this. <laughs> right. I know. I know. I mean, we, we, it, and it's hard these days for a wide variety of reasons. I mean, mm-hmm. there is a lot of competition in every niche. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what it is. Um, mm-hmm. you have to stand out. And that's why I, I think it being, you know, not being afraid to niche down is a big part of it because the more you niche down, the more you can stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you do have to sell. You have to sell yourself, your ideas, your actual products and services. And I remember when Richard and I launched our business, it was like, okay, then this was, this was with the advent of the internet. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I am going so far back, so ridiculous. <laughs> and it was like, well, I have to get on the phone and try to track down a decision maker to see if they will hire us mm-hmm. and send them information. And of course, things took so much longer back then. Um, mm-hmm. although we were emailing, but you know, and, uh, it, it just, you, you realize that you have to do it. You have to, you have to sell. You have to mm-hmm. be telling your story to people and give them an opportunity. And I, I call those go for no moments. It's that moment where, Whatever your process is, however you do put your work out there, mm-hmm. it's that moment where somebody can say, yes, I want more information. Yes, I want to hire you. Mm-hmm. Or no, I don't know. No, I'm not interested. Right. And the more opportunities we do that, the more uh, go for no moments we create, the more successful we will be. Mm. 
So could you elaborate a little bit more on that for someone who may be listening and going, I don't understand how that can work? Yes. <laughs> right, right, exactly. So it's, so there's, there's the quantity quality issue, I think, and that is it's, um, sharing your story with as, as many people as you can, as fast as you can, giving them the opportunity to hear no, uh, or to say no, excuse me. Um, and, and in that process, uh, potentially get yeses. So it could be as simple as, Hey, I'm going to build this website and I'm going to have, I'm going to ask people if they want to sign up for my newsletter or I'm going to go to a trade show and I'm going to meet people and ask them if they want to sign up for my newsletter there, if they want to try a sample of my product, if they would like to take a brochure home with them, um, if they want to buy my product, uh, which is the most basic, simplest, straightforward ask, right? Mm-hmm. You know, would, would would you like to buy this today? Um, are you interested in getting X, Y, or Z? Have you ever thought about signing up for this kind of service, hiring a coach, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And when you ask people those questions, um, and the more no's you collect, ultimately the more yeses you collect. What we typically do, I'll give you the, a perfect example to kind of um, put it into like real world, this is what happens. This is the go for no mindset versus the go for yes mindset. So the go for no mindset would be something like, let's say you go to a networking event and you're a business coach and you, you go and you have 10 conversations. You meet 10 people. Um, you come back with 10 business cards and all of these people you think could be based on your conversation, a good candidate for your service. Mm-hmm. But what we typically do with a, a go for yes. Now this is go for yes mindset, mind you, mm-hmm. is we start analyzing and we say, you know, out of these 10 people that I talk to, the reality is that five of them I'm not really sure are going to be interested. They, I, we didn't have a great conversation. And so the reality is I'm going to just put these five aside and I'm going to say based on my abilities and skills in analyzing people's behavior and motivations mm-hmm. that they're going to say no. So I'm going to set the five business cards aside. Now you have five left. So now you start analyzing those five and you say, well, out of these five, um, three of them I had good conversations with them. Um, they would be perfect clients for me, but I think they were like kind of maybes. I, I, I don't know if, if they would sign up with me right away. So I'm going to put these aside as well. And now you have two cards left and you say to yourself, these, these two people, I had a great connection. They seemed very interested. I'm going to go ahead and send these people an email or give them a call and see um, if they'd like to take the next step, maybe something formal, see if, if they want to, um, you know, uh, engage me for actual business. Mm-hmm. So now what we've done, Deb, is we've taken this, this opportunity, right? These 10 potential no's, mm-hmm. got rid of eight of them for variety of excuses. Like we assume they're going to say no. We mm-hmm. don't think they have the money. We don't think we had a connection. We didn't have enough time, whatever. What but all the excuses that we come up with and then we limit ourselves Mm-hmm. And the irony is that the two people that you maybe follow up with in that scenario will say no or never get back to you. Mm-hmm. And one of the people that you assume you didn't have a good connection with or whatever would have said yes. Mm-hmm. So the go for no mindset really is contact all 10 of them. Start building the relationship with all 10 of them. Yes, mm-hmm. some people will fall out. Some people, you, you're, you will be right. You won't have a good connection with them. Mm-hmm. They weren't interested and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But you, you know, you will eventually filter them out and put them aside or whatever. Um, maybe they become a, a referral connection or some, something else, but you just don't make the decision for someone else. You go for no and you really push through those assumptions. Mm. That's a great example um, because uh, obviously a lot of times that's what people will do. They'll just assume <laughs> and cut off every everything. Like they won't move to the next level. They won't make that call um, or follow through, follow up because they'll just assume. Well, I know that's not going to work, and then you never know. You never know, and and yeah. that is and that is a really key point. I think too is if you do get the no, um, and I get asked this a lot too, is you know what what do you do then, right? Mm-hmm. What what do yes. you do? Um, 
with that no. And it's great to get a no. Um, because then there's something to work with. Then there's, then there's something that you can say, oh, okay. Either like, oh, I'm surprised because you seemed really interested. If you're a, a you know, a weight loss coach or something, you seemed really interested in, in getting fit and losing weight. I'm surprised that you, you were interested. And then at that point, the person can say, oh, well, here's why. Mm-hmm. This is bad timing. I don't have the money. Now you really know you're not just assuming what their right. objection is, what their reason is. You're actually finding out, and then you can maybe manage it and say, well, I'd really like to get you started, so mm-hmm. what can we do to solve this issue? Or, fine, how about if this if it is a really bad time for you, let's follow up and let me follow up with you in six weeks, get their permission, and now you've at least kept mm-hmm. the door open and you can follow up with them. And then it's kind of funny, I, we were at an event a couple weeks ago, and Someone came up after and we actually got a chance to have a Q&A, which we never get get to do. And she said, I was going to ask this question in front of the group and we ran out of time. She said, what do you do if you get a no? And, and the person says like, no, and never contact me. And I said, well, that's actually a, a good no as well, because mm-hmm. now you just learned that, hey, it's really not a good fit. They're not interested. It doesn't matter how perfect a client they meet be for you. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. And so just wish them well and send them on their way. You know, Mm -hmm. you you just saved a lot of time. And I think sometimes we, we um, can get our head turned and think with people. Sometimes they'll say, Oh, I'm interested. I'm interested. Mm -hmm. And they're just being nice. So if you, if you get a no, actually, it's not a bad thing. (laughs) So true. That's a great way to look at it as well. You know, because I think that, um, people are afraid often to be that pushy uh, salesperson and think they've got to just push, push, push. And, you know, I know being someone who's who's had uh, a salesperson try to push um, mm-hmm. me into making decision and knowing that I really wasn't too interested for one reason or another and then have the person not even leave the door open but kind of be like okay well fine um then i'm like wow you know you you didn't even try to say well let's maybe reconnect it was not a good time because i didn't say no outright but i would have been open to something later and they seemed to be as though well they want that yes right now and that was it Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah yeah it's a and yeah, and you, you don't want to push someone, you don't want to push them away. You don't yes. want to push someone into something. Um, it's a delicate balance. But if you can, so people ask me a lot of times, well, if I get that no, should I try to deal with it? And mm-hmm. I, I always say, if you can, if you feel comfortable mm-hmm. kind of pressing, trying to dig, trying to peel peel back, um, sometimes you, you can't. And it's just a situation where they say, I'm not interested. And you think, uh, I mean, even, even on social media, even if it's a LinkedIn note and the person mm-hmm. writes you back, um, if you want say, uh, no, no problem. I I'll check back with you. And you just say, you know what, this person, it, it's not necessarily a no, never. Mm-hmm. They're not interested. Now I'm going to check back with them until they say it's a no, never. Yes, that's true. That's a good point. That um, I think people can um, understand how to communicate <laughs> with others in a, in, in a real positive way, and not really leave a bad a bad feeling there. Uh, that now you you can't mm-hmm. accept this rejection, so you're just going to close the door on it. Mm-hmm. But you know, not understanding that that the other person may just not be able to do it right now, and it's okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, Andrea, could you please share where people can find you? Yeah, so it's uh, goforno.com, G-O-F-O-R-N-O.com. No numbers, just the letters. (laughs) Um, And we've branded everything Go For No, so it's easy to easy to find us. Um, And and on our website, we have a free no quotient assessment. So if people want to take that, it's kind of a fun tool to see where your thoughts are, where your mindset is in relationship to hearing no. 
Wonderful. And, you know, this conversation is always, we were talking uh, before we started, that it's this is always going to be a timely conversation, I think, because the idea of rejection um, and failure, you know, it's it strikes fear into people's hearts. It does. It does. It's just we deal, we all deal with it, and we all are pushing through it all the time. It just never goes away. Exactly. So that that's hard for people to accept, you know, and, and I'm, I find, um, you know, right now, particularly with the online um, influences and, and a lot of uh, people uh, telling people who come, I guess, into the online space, oh, you can just do this and, and you'll have money flowing and you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what is your take on, on some of these approaches out here now? Yeah, you know, well, there's that whole, the whole social selling movement and the, if you just push out enough content that, mm. you know, people will come to you. And I think, I think there's a couple things. I mean, first of all, I agree with the, with the whole idea of content marketing and, and, and providing value like you're doing with this podcast, right? It's just a way that you connect with people by providing value. Um, people get to know you, they hear your voice over and over again, and that, helps them know, like, and trust you. So that's Mm -hmm. a big part of it. However, at the same time, you have to do things that create a further connection. You you have to have strategies and and find out who these people are that are listening, um, kind of build a relationship, and then at some point invite someone, you know, be constantly asking people, Hey, would you like to, um, I offer, if it's, if it's your type of business with a, it's a service business, I offer a half hour consultation or a free visit or whatever. I, thinking of the guy I went to for my first acupuncture treatment, it was like, you know, come in discounted consultation, right? The whole nine yards and, mm-hmm. um, that, you know, but sharing that over and over, it's that reactive versus proactive marketing. And I think in today's world, you still have to make time for that proactive, I'm going to go out and really connect with people proactively strategy. That's really true. You know, and I think that's the thing that we end up um, forgetting to do because you you kind of forget the point of what you're doing. Right. <laughs> You know, that call to action. <laughs> the call to action. Yeah, you just get so busy, busy, busy creating, creating, creating. Yes. Um, and, and also engaging with people, right? I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's one of the things that I love to do is I love to go out and whether it's on Twitter or Facebook or even Instagram and see who's talking about, and I can use hashtags or sort the search function, who's mm-hmm. talking about failure and rejection, mm-hmm. who's talking about my topic so that mm-hmm. I can comment and have the person go, oh, who is this? And mm-hmm. that was an interesting comment she made. And so it doesn't matter what area of expertise and what service you provide, if mm-hmm. you can engage other people and and offer them some value on social media. It is a, a way to build connections. But it, like you said, again, I mean, you could, you could be on Facebook for seven hours and then finally just be like, Oh my gosh, what, what, where, where am I? <laughs> that's very true. I, I think that's a lot of it as well because we, and we're in social media and sometimes you just lose, kind of lose the plot. You know, you're just kind of out there interacting or, or not, you know, just reading tweets Read. or posts yeah. and still not really achieving anything that you're trying to do because right. uh, either because of the reluctance and not knowing how to do it. And, mm-hmm. and as you said, you know, you're offering information and giving value. It's not that you're out there going, uh, buy this, buy this, buy this, but you're creating these connections is really what it is, I think. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that, and that's the thing that people have to learn how to do. It's, it's selling doesn't have to just mean going out there and trying to force something. It's, it's building the connections. I think that's a part that sometimes gets overlooked mm-hmm. in all of it. Um, you know, a lot of the, the social, selling with the content, but then there's also kind of a safety there too. Don't you think where people just feel like I'll just put this out and wait for someone to come. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's, I mean, and they can, they can, and that, that is usually a part of it, but it's usually mm-hmm. not enough, right? Mm-hmm. Usually, um, 
at least it's somewhere to start, but I think you, it takes a long time to build those, those type of connections. And so it's uh, always to me, it's look at all of the ways that you can market and tap into all of the different strategies. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. Definitely see what different things that you can do. Um, and I guess I have one more question. Um, are there a certain amount, number of no's that we should be going for? <laughs> ah, that is a fantastic question. It's funny that that popped into my head because I thought, you know, we haven't talked about that. It, 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 it really depends. One of the things that Richard and I talk about is we had, when we first started our business, a goal to get a hundred companies to say no to us each month. I mean, we were cold calling and emailing companies, vice president of human resources or training to try to get hired. And so at a hundred, I mean, that was very challenging, but that was also back when you could reach people more easily, you know, and it was, um, it was easier to get a hundred, but a hundred was still a lot. So that it depends on how hard you want to work in your business, how, um, you know, what, what some of your goals are. And Mm -hmm. I always tell people you can reverse engineer it. So if you know that you need um, 10 appointments, let's say to sit down with somebody and if you get 10, then you usually get one sale. So really it's, it's trying to get those 10 appointments. Those are your 10, um, you know, your 10 no knows that you're trying to get. And then you know that for every 10, you get one sale. So Sometimes you could kind of reverse engineer it that way. I think, and maybe it might make uh, people feel a little better <laughs> about <Right>. that prospect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of putting themselves out there, you know, because they can figure that, yes, I there's a strategy here that I'm really trying to get. <laughs> Right. I mean, if you if you think about it, this, and some of the numbers are staggering. If you just... And, a, and obviously you're not going to do this on Christmas and probably New Year's Day. So you have to, you have to, you have to double up on a couple of days, but just think about this. If you made the conscious choice to hear no once a day, just mm-hmm. once a day from a potential client or prospect or somebody that could, you could do business with, that's 365 no's in a year. Mm-hmm. So the question is, do you think that of those 365, a few of them would turn into yeses. I mean, I just have to believe. And if you did do that once a day, just one a day, that halfway through the year, you would have figured some things out and made some improvements and said, okay, I need to change this up or this marketing, this message isn't working. I'm not getting through to people or Mm -hmm. people are, I'm, I, uh, I'm not being clear about what I'm offering or my prices are too low or they're too high, right? Mm-hmm. So it's all the things that we kind of learn and can adjust. But if we're not doing that at all, we just have such little evidence to go off of. Mm. That's true, too, because if you, you don't really know what's not working, you're not really out there um, putting yourself out there, talking to people, um, getting that feedback. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's yes. true. Wow. Well, when you look at it that way, I think that maybe this will make people a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> yes, they have to value. When you look at it that way, it makes it easier. It makes it easier to swallow, and then and then you get better. Your confidence builds. It's not as scary. I mean, if I told you to get a hundred no's this week, I think people would be like, "I don't want to do that. That seems crazy." <laughs> um, and, it, and it would be right. I don't mm-hmm. want to make people crazy. You want them to have fun and enjoy the process and all of that. Um, so if you can break it down into small chunks, we call it setting a no goal. So if you had a no goal for one a day or mm-hmm. 10 a week or something, um, you can make some real serious headway in your business. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's very true. That's very true. So it's, it's really the setting the goals and knowing what you want to go for um, and, and turning it into a positive uh, thing that you're looking to achieve and, and not just – uh, looking at his failure. <laughs> that is so true. That's so true. I think that that could be, that could help people to really give this a better um, feeling for themselves if they're just, you know still kind of nervous about jumping into this whole uh, whole new concept. You know. So Andrea, we we've had such a wonderful conversation about this. Um, do you have any final thoughts about about this topic? Yeah, I mean, my 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 favorite thought to leave people with is just to practice going for no 
in daily life. If it's, mm. if it's scary to think about it from a business standpoint, then try, you know, asking your spouse to do something that you want them to do or, <laughs> or your kids or your parents or, or if you're at a restaurant, there's a better table at the front of the restaurant that you want asking to sit there, asking for a hotel upgrade, you know, things that you say, Hey, this is not scary. This is not, um, the same. It doesn't have the mm-hmm. same emotional reaction and just practicing asking and that mm-hmm. practicing that muscle. Cause that is part of building your courage and it takes some time to build that courage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a great, uh, a great thing to do. I think cause a lot of times people don't know. They just assume again, when we're talking about assuming you go, Oh, I'm not going to ask cause I know it's not going to work. Right. And then you never know just asking that question where that can lead. Yes. 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 Oh my goodness. Well, this, this is very good, um, advice for everyone who may be a little nervous at first. Right. <laughs> hearing about the topic but you know i think it's it's really fantastic and it's a way to really turn it around your mind as yes you want to turn it positive exactly yes oh my goodness that's really great um so andrea i'm so glad you returned to share more about this topic um you know it's, it's seeing how important it is because you see we're still talking about it so. i know all this time has passed i'm yes. still talking about it and you still need people talking about it yes we we really do because i think that's only going to help everyone to really be more successful so i really appreciate you returning to the show with this andrea it's been a wonderful conversation thank you so much so everyone, I know you enjoyed this, so make sure you share it on social media, share it with your friends, definitely um, check out um, Andrea's site in her book, and really get um, a lot out of this. This is really going to help you um, in your business and just in life in general, I, I feel, so um, please make sure that you do that. And once again, some Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on Facebook.com slash Women Entrepreneurs and on the website, WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on DVCoach.Podomatic.com and on iTunes.